Okay, and just really briefly, there are some implications for those who might be in relationships. Uh, we got to remember that sex is more than intercourse, um, and it is more, and intimacy is more than sex. Um, so intimacy is touching, kissing, cuddling. I mean, there's there's this down here at the spectrum all the way up to intercourse or whatever else might be on that end for a lot of people. But there are all of these places along the way that can be experienced to bring closeness and pleasure and um, comfort for couples. All right, and, and before I mentioned um, that a lot of women can experience some um, pain after birth, um, we call this postpartum dyspareunia. Um, there are some things that you can do to help prevent tearing or having an episiotomy. Um, talk to your MD about some of these options before having the baby. I think that can be a number one thing that can potentially help. Okay, and after the birth, um, make sure you are able to ask any questions that you have at all um, from reliable sources. Do not just keep the questions to yourself. There is help out there. There are answers out there. And I cannot tell you how many of um, women I've just been so surprised feel so isolated um, by not being able to have a, a source that they feel comfortable enough to ask questions to. Just a couple thoughts that I do have um, additionally to the, to the postpartum dyspareunia. The six week mark is generally a checkup, um, not an automatic green light to get right back into intercourse. Um, talk to your MD, like I said, um, about any worries that you may have. Talk to your partner. Um, who says you have to go right back to full-blown intercourse? Um, take the process slow and enjoy each part uh, uh, for the particular connection um, it can bring to you and your partner. And prepare for the likelihood that lubricant can come in handy. Remember, decreased estrogen um, means decreased lubrication. and decreased estrogen is certainly taking place uh, right after giving birth. Some frequently asked questions that I get, um, and I certainly refer them right over to a medical provider for an accurate medical diagnosis, but in my practice I, I get quite a few of these uh, frequently asked questions and I thought I would share a few. Um, so number one, is it all in my head? Am I crazy? Absolutely not. Um, if your medical provider is telling you that your pain is all in your head, you need to seek another medical provider. Um, that's it for that one. Um, another frequently asked question is, will it ever get better? And my answer to that is, it's likely that it, it, that it can. Um, but the best thing you can do is get a, a good team. That is, that is one of the best things that you can do to get on the track for feeling much less pain and hopefully get it out of there. Um, and then another one that I get a lot in my practice is, am I the only one? And that is, it, it, you are not. If you are watching this and you feel that you might be the only one experiencing this, you are so not alone. Um, I hope that you've learned a little bit through watching this um, that there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of resources out there. There are a lot of providers out there. It just might take some digging and some research. Um, but but you are certainly not alone and there are ways that this can not be a problem in your life anymore. So I thought I would leave you with uh, the five fundamentals that are outlined by the writers of When Sex Hurts. Um, and number one is sex should not include any unwanted pain. It should not hurt. Um, number two is sex should feel good. It should be pleasurable. And number three, sex should occur when and how you want it. Um, and four, sex should be part of a healthy relationship. And five, sex should not be the centerpiece of a healthy relationship. There is so much that makes up um, what we would consider a healthy relationship. Sex does not need to be the centerpiece, but it is an important piece. Um, and so they, I hope that you've seen that there are many resources that can help you get on the path to healing. So in conclusion, I want to leave you with one last quote from the book, When Sex Hurts. Um, pain during sex is not okay. You do not have to live with it. Pain is a sign of dysfunction, of something gone awry in your body. You need to find out what's wrong and start on the road to resolution. All right, thank you so much for watching this today. I'm having so much fun with these myths and I really appreciate all the incredible feedback that I've been getting. Um, so I will see you next week with our next myth and uh, hopefully by the end of the year, you will feel just a wee bit more sexually informed. All right, rock on.